everybody, it's Tyler here with another episode of Behind the Bot. I'm here with team number 14631 Laser Tech. And we're checking out the robot here with Namai, Jake, and Jack. And this robot is gorgeous. Uh, great machine, currently ranked number one as we're filming this as well too at this event. Uh, so of course, going through all the mechanisms that they have, uh, some of their different aspects of their camera, 3D printing, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. Hey, FTC teams, championships may be canceled, but FTC Reveal Night is still on where you can create a two-minute hype video to show off your team to the first community. Last year, dozens of teams submitted their robot hype video and thousands watched live as they were showcased. The event will take place on Saturday, April 24th, and submissions are due by Sunday, April 18th. Find out more information at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash FTC Reveal 2021 or at discord.gg forward slash firstupdatesnow. So, Namai, let's take us through the uh, p the uh, journey of the rings as they go through the robot, starting with the intake. Sure. Uh, so, first, we sort of back into the ring, and our intake will pull it in. We have three different rollers so that it doesn't have a dead zone, or it has a minimum amount of dead zones. Uh, so, as it goes through there, it also has a, a pair of rubber bands that will sort of help pull the ring into the hopper. Uh, we can pick up up to three rings. Uh, and can you talk, talk to me about a little bit about, about the iteration process in this? Like, was this your first design you came up with, or what were some trials and failures and then successes that you had? Uh, well, this is, we uh, tried a few different designs, uh, but this, this second roller was added in after, after we figured out that we needed something to stop the ring from getting stuck there. Sure. And it's worked out very well for you guys so far, as I mentioned, number one seed here so far. Uh, so as it goes into the hopper, are you storing all three and then it pivots up, or how does that work? Uh, we store all three, and then uh, our flywheel starts Sure. Uh, right here. And then we have a servo here that uh, sort of has a little uh, piece of aluminum that pushes the ring into the flywheel, and that fires the ring. And then what are you using uh, for the flywheel to uh, power that? And do you know anything about like your RPM or gear ratio or anything like that? Or, uh, or compression on the rings? Uh, I'm not 100% sure about the, uh, the power or the rotations. Sure. But we use two motors so that the flywheel doesn't slow down as much when we... What, what kind of motors are you using in there? Uh, we're using uh, Gobilda motors. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then we actually have this wheel that provides a bit of compression so that if there's uh, an altered ring, it minimizes the amount of uh, alteration that the, uh, the firing has. All right, and so before we go over to Jack, tell me about the wobble goal mechanism you have here. We'll be talking a little bit more about the 3D printing in a bit. Uh, but tell me about uh, maybe some of the iterations you went through with your wobble goal mechanism. Yeah, so uh, we sort of had this arm set from the beginning. Uh, we went through a few different designs for the claw part. Uh, we had uh, a bigger piece, but then we, we found out that uh, it didn't provide enough leeway for our wobble goal. It was kind of hard to aim it, so we decided to fit this in. And now we can sort of, we sort of have all this area for our driver to adjust. So let's keep moving on with this robot and, and talking about uh, some different attributes of it. So Jake, I know you want to talk a little about the camera, uh, what you've been using for that as well, and uh, any other programming things on the robot too. So, for our camera, we actually use Vuforia to scan a small section of the field. We also have this little piece here that we're able to swap between two sides, depending on if we're inner or outer lined of the field. Uh, when doing this, uh, it automatically is adjust. It's already adjusted to where the rings are. Sure. And our system takes a small slice out of the rings stack, and then calculates how many orange pixels are in there which will then tell our robot where to place the wobble goal based on how many rings are actually in that stack. So if there's four, we'll place it in zone Z C, and if there's one, we'll place it in zone B, and if there's zero, we'll place it in zone A. That's really cool. I love to hear about that. Uh, have you guys used, uh, by the way, going back to your camera, have you guys used Vuforia or Vuforia at all, we, or is this your first time? We have used Vuforia in the past with our Skystones because sure. we 
when we one placing our sky stones in the correct area or dragging the sky stone across the line, we had to scan it so we could pick up the correct one, move it across the line to get the most amount of points instead of picking up just a normal brick, which will give us less points. So let's wrap up on this uh, robot here. Uh, going over and talking about some of the 3D uh, printed uh, parts on this. And Jack, you're going to be covering that. Uh, just a beautiful machine you guys have here all together, but the 3D printing really makes it come together. Thank you. Uh, the reason we use 3D printing is actually because some functions are not exactly able to be easily made with pre-made parts, sure. such as switching the camera or the claw and holding the wobble goal in place so therefore we 3d print those parts in order to aid those special purposes such as filling in a slot moving around the camera like a lego piece in order to better suit the autonomous mode and and putting plastic on the bumpers in order to make sure it doesn't crash into anything and get broken well, overall, this is a fantastic machine. I know you guys got a match coming up here, so we're going to wrap up. But good luck to you. Uh, 14631 Laser Tech once again. Absolutely great looking machine. Can't wait to see how this robot does in the playoffs and, of course, throughout the rest of the season. Good luck, guys. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.